Hey, Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Let's Play Imperator Rome. So, uh, where we left off, we had managed to conquer a little chunk of Greece, and we were working on some other areas of the map. Um, so, I kind of want these guys to be out of the war with Carthage, because I don't want Carthage to push back. So, I might turn my attention to some of these guys up here. Now, unfortunately, I don't have Cass's bellies on these guys. Now, they are... Allied. If I were to declare war on these guys, they would have some allies joining them. I could get a claim on these guys, attack and get these three provinces. It's really not that much. Could I, like, demand their vassalization? They wouldn't take it right now because of the opinion. Hmm. We shall see. I'm trying to think what we could do. Opinion is pretty low. I don't think I'm going to be able to get... I don't think I'm going to get them to play with me, play nicely. Now, I'm curious, what is Egypt? Egypt is a major power. And so am I. What about Maria? Is a great power. Okay, so we need at least 500 cities to be considered a great power. And right now we have 120. So we're going to have to start expanding. And we got to figure out where we want to do it. And I think we're going to expand to the north. I think that's really our best move here. Start trying to civilize these territories. Now we will be up against a lot of tribal troops if we expand north. That is the one downside. What about these guys? Whereas if we attack these guys, they're a little bit more vulnerable, I feel. Their allies are a little bit smaller, and we get ourselves this nice little chunk up here of land in uh, Cisalpine Gaul. So I'm going to start moving my troops back to, uh, to Rome. And I think I will probably also build a second fleet now. We'll get that going in Neapolis. We'll kind of start working on it. I want to have two fleets that can transport. Except that. Let's set you guys to be... Uh, transport. So if I send you guys here... Can you go deposit these units over here? I might leave a troop of units over here in Greece. So think about that. I think I'd also would really like to build another fort in around here. How is my fort looking in here, actually? I've got a fort here. But I think if I were to build another one, it would be in Sparta itself. I can't actually build one there, though, unfortunately. All these provinces have buildings in them. So I think I might build it here then. I'd build a fort right here in Lemurium. And that would provide some fort advantage around here. Making it hard for these guys to attack me for free. A lot of this territory would be unprotected without this fort. So we'll slap a fort down in there. We also have a bunch of cash. Um, but I'm going to build up my army before I really do anything with that cash. Um, so I'm thinking my light army will be able to move up here and I'll keep these two armies over here as well for now But I do want to try to build up this um, So this cohort has a weight of eight because it's a mixture of uh, light infantry and heavy infantry and I think we're gonna put the Heavy infantry as the primary cohort, although they tend to fight archers, so we might do like light infantry, heavy infantry, and then um, cavalry. And then some heavy cavalry. 
And so to bring this up to a size of 12 or 14, we'll get two equites. And that'll bring this army up to a pretty size. Well, this is going to be a much heavier army, sort of a shock army that is much more focused around um, hitting hard. But yeah, we should be able to win this war. In fact, I, I, you know what? I'm going to bring my, my second heavy army over. Um, and I'll leave this lighter army to protect Sparta and stuff. So this is only 10,000 troops, but it is 10,000 very, very strong troops. This would be, this guy would be great at commanding a lighter army, like an archer and light infantry army, which we might build a, an archer and light infantry army. Enslavement efficiency, merciful. There we go. I'll take this guy, he's good at sieging. My boats are almost here. We shall pick up these troops. Is there a way to load them into the boat? Is there a button, perhaps? That I have just missed? No, I guess I, I guess they have to just walk out. And we'll transport these guys all the way up here. Uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and build up a second fight. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 boats on the way. We're good on manpower. This navy does need a leader. Ideally, someone a little bit less important. Uh, we'll take this guy, as Fabius Licinius. And, uh, yeah, I suppose we have a bunch of cash in the bank, so let's do the granary thing that we were planning on doing. Every province in here now has maxed out granaries, in theory, as that'll hopefully increase the population of this area into something uh, more useful over time. It will, like, again, it does take nearly 100 years for a... Um, it does take nearly a hundred years for a uh, thing. What's the word? For a pop to grow from a granary. Ugh. Trade protection policy. That would reduce the amount of capital import routes, and I don't want to do that. There would be a bit of unrest for two years. I think I'm going to take the unrest for two years. I don't want to lose my capital import route. Although this will get the populist faction on my side. Kind of sucks. I'm going to manually cancel fish. No. Olives. Should we get another marketplace in the capital? Um... Well, we're up to like... 50 pop here. Sorry, 80 pop. 70 pop. So I think I'd like to get another fortress in here to keep it safe. Eh, we probably don't need to do that just yet. Well, what I could do is I could destroy a training camp, add a marketplace. How's the slave happiness in here? It's a little bit low. So I tell you what. Cancel that. We'll add two granaries to the capital. And what this should do is increase the growth rate, but more importantly, keep all these slaves a little bit happier in here. And uh, increase the productivity of them and, and reduce the chance that they revolt. Because as we expand, we're going to get more and more slaves who don't follow our religion, who are of a different culture, and who are much more likely to uh, be very upset with us. I'm going to go for a shock action with these, although a bottleneck action works pretty well. So I'll do a bottleneck action with these guys. Uh, you will be on a deception stance, and then these guys are on a skirmishing stance. So I have three stances sort of available to me. And you can switch these on the fly. You don't have to do it. It's just like, I find this to be, just personally speaking, a little bit of a micromanagement that I'm not super into. Okay, so let's check out the Alliance Network here. All right. Good, good, good. So we are going to fabricate a claim on 
me have a look. Yeah, I'm gonna do Liguria. Fabricate came on uh, Fabricate claim on Liguria. And we'll declare the war soon as well. We almost have enough military power for yet another uh, military tradition advance. Omen power will be really great to pick up too. National manpower from exporting grain, yes. Extra little bit of manpower there is always nice. We're up to 160k maximum manpower. We're getting 600 a month, which is a really great amount. Uh, so let's go ahead and get the war declared. We've got a lot of forts to siege down. Let's get a navy up here into this province here so we can get a little bit of vision of these coastal provinces. I believe navies, yeah, there you go. Are they barbs? No, they're retinues. Now, they significantly outnumber me in terms of troops, but the majority of their army is uh, archers. Whereas I have a decent amount of light cavalry and heavy cavalry over here that will, uh, will do decently against this archer heavy force they're using. Now, their archers do do really well against our um, light infantry and our heavy infantry. And when I say do well, I mean they do, just don't suffer penalties against heavy infantry. So let's get moving. We don't want to avoid attrition if at all possible. Let's get this heavier legion moving in first. We'll have the light legion in supporting positions. Somebody wants to buy resources off me. No commander for this navy. I thought I had assigned one. You will do. We have an invention. Navy maintenance cost is actually quite good. Sacrifice to the gods. Coding, diplomatic range, improve, improve opinion maximum is a really good one to pick up if we can, actually. Um, it means any improve opinions we do are much more effective. Citizen output and build costs are really, really good as well. This is a hard one to choose. Citizen output is going to result in a tech boost for me, though. So we'll go for that. All right, let's... Uh, can I safely... We're going to take a pretty hefty attrition tick here. But it'll be good to have our armies engaging together. Twenty-five thousand men, lots of heavy infantry. We're going up against a mostly archer heavy army and we have a pretty heavy infantry heavy army, so this might not exactly go to plan. So you can see here, uh, archers, we did roll the deception, which beats skirmishing. That's good. Our heavy infantry are like doing reasonably, although our discipline is doing a lot of the work as is the experience and stance advantage. Now our light infantry are kind of holding their own too, which is surprising because light infantry tend to be quite weak to archers, but uh, they seem to be doing just fine. Um, they're actually winning out against them thanks to all the stacking bonuses we have. So we should be able to collapse this pretty easily. Our morale is holding strong. Our troop strength is holding strong. Excellent. So can you advance? You could by going onto the boats. I don't want these guys to stay standing here and taking attrition. I'm going to pull back with my heavy heavy cohort here cancel that looks like they're coming in for an attack i'm gonna wait until i see the little lock symbol 
There it is. They're locked into combat. Wiping them out with our high quality troops. Plus they're coming in in dribs and drabs, so they're taking some penalties. We have the deception stance, which is helping too. We'll have an extra stack coming in. We're taking a lot of attrition though. We probably didn't need these extra 16 stacks. Let's see if we can get them out of there. Pull you guys back too. Let's get you onto the boats. So the actual siege progress chance is higher than the minus 35 that you can see here. Because some of the modifiers aren't being taken into account here. Alright, let's have a look. So we pushed them back. We are taking a bit of attrition on this boat, but I think it's worth it to take this attrition so that we have a unit in position to um, support from the ocean. Okay. Now, what is our tech rate? If we wanted to, we could continue to increase our tech rate. Um, but I think I think we're fine for now. We're going to just save up some points, get through this war. We'll go up to a higher speed while we wait for these forts to siege down. Religious advance, that's great. Can I afford to buy a... I want to buy some of this civic power. For sure. Try and uh, get more of these inventions. Because there's a lot of inventions that are going to be disappearing soon. I could go to higher... Tax rates. Well, it's not really that much. I wish I knew what was deciding the price of this. Oh, you know what else? I have actually integrated uh, one of my vassals over here. Can I integrate you guys now? Let me have a look. Yep, ready for integration. So we'll integrate you. And we will integrate you. How's the loyalty of these guys, actually, out of curiosity? They're pretty loyal. Um, that's good, that's good. Can improve opinion quite a bit. So here they come. Let's get the heavy infantry moving back in. The battle will begin... Not too distant future. I want you to try and cut off any reinforcements to this fight. Uh, we're still winning in deception stance. That's really, really great because the AI has a tendency... Uh, barbarian AIs have a tendency to use skirmishing, so I'm quite glad that we have the deception stance. Although we do want to be careful here because I'm pretty sure skirmishing is better against bottleneck. So we're going to go ahead and go to deception on these guys, even if it doesn't really give them a benefit. And you can see, just because of our, our troop quality, our discipline, our tactics advantage, we're cutting through a numerically superior opponent. And hopefully we're going to cut off uh, reinforcements here to prevent them from... Uh, stopping the siege because I really want this siege to go through there's, uh, there's actually a 21% chance of success here now this battle we have a skirmishing against bottleneck so we actually managed to pull an advantage in here as well but this fight this fight winning isn't so important uh, let's pull back the heavy infantry again we don't want to take too much attrition this battle we're much less likely to win overall but we are still going to do significant damage so there's going to be an election. Uh, I think I'm going to promote the military faction. Try and keep them in favor. Religious faction won. So I'm going to pull my army back to the boats now. 
but... Oh, alright, we took a lot of damage. But we actually did a lot more damage than what's down here, as far as I can remember. And the good news is that Genuatia is going to have a hard time reinforcing their armies. Wait a minute, where are you going? Interesting. You guys are forcing me to take attrition by parking your troops here. I just want you to know that. Okay, I'm going to move these guys back a province and move these guys up a province and start a new siege. There will be a battle here too. I'm going to pull you guys back to rest. If I pull you all the way back, you guys will rest more efficiently. Replenish your troops. We're missing 13,000 infantry. Oh dear, what happened here? Why is our morale so low? We should still win. We have a massive um, discipline advantage. Rome owes the military faction influence. Yes, military faction is a faction that I'm okay with. We actually lost that battle, interestingly. We lost it pretty heavily and lost a lot of troops, but that's okay. I don't retreat that far back. I wish I could decide how far back, like, maybe there was, like, an ability to say, hey, don't retreat that far. Okay, these guys are pretty replenished, so we're going to start moving them in. Looks like we slaughtered another army over here. We're going to pop up here, start sieging that down. Regret, I need to go save that army if I can. You guys will replenish over time. I don't think they replenish while they're retreating, which makes kind of sense. These guys sent me money, I think. That is one too many boats. We do not need this many boats. That's money that I'm paying for that I don't need to be. Uh, we can get an invention. We just got a religious advance. So national tribes and happiness. This could help with the civilization process. Uh, technology speed would also be really great. Navy morale recovery. Because a lot of the tribesmen that I do have are pretty... They're, they're losing happiness and being less useful. So for example, if I go in here... These guys only are producing at a rate of 84%. Because their happiness is quite low. So by boosting the happiness of those guys, it could be helpful. On the other hand, I could get build cost reductions or national commerce income boosts. And if I get enough national commerce income boosts, I could safely... Um, do transaction taxation without too many problems. Yeah, I'm going to grab the National Tribesman Happiness because that's going to apply to a lot of the pops that were taken over in here. You can see in these um, sort of uncivilized lands, there's a lot of tribes. And they're going to not only be tribes, they're going to be the wrong culture and the wrong religion. So that's going to make it even harder for us. If I go to the religion map mode here, you can see, sure, these guys are Hellenic, but like pretty much everyone else is not. And then if we go to the culture map mode, sure, these guys are the right culture, but a lot of people who are going to be conquering are not the right culture. So that's something to just keep in mind. Okay, some deaths. Now we did burn a lot of manpower here. We should win that fight pretty quickly, yeah. Uh, looks like my Prefectus Militaris died. We'll pick up this guy. He's got an 8. So that'll be an extra 8% national tax. Gonna move you guys back up to a place to heal. They cancelled their military access. That's fine. Another fight that we are winning. Get these things sieged down. So they'll, we'll get a reinforcement tick here before they land. And we should be able to fight these guys off. Because we have a higher troop quality and all that jazz. Excellent. 
A lot of these troops should be picking up some experience too. You can see uh, they take 3.5% less damage because of all the experience they have. Now, every time they reinforce, I think their experience drops a little bit. So um, it's kind of hard to maintain 100% experience. But we can certainly build it up a little bit. I could take more discipline here to keep fighting. But I think I've basically won this fight. So manpower it would be good to replenish my manpower a little bit quicker with the blessing of Apollo. My aggressive expansion is going to go up pretty quick here in a minute. Um, commerce income. I could go for national tax boosts or I could get more population. I'm just going to power hard for the late game with a lot of pops. More pops. I feel like that has like a long term, a long term return. Because it applies to every province in my empire. So that's like 120 something cities um, that are getting... Pops. We're down to 10% tribesmen, which is fantastic. So I'm expecting to see very, 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 very few tribesmen. Still maintaining a good number of citizens as well, which is great. I'd like to see some of these sieges complete. You can buy that resource off me. I want to try and take all of these together if I can. Would really suit me quite well. Okay, we captured a pop and sent it to Rome. Ah, civil war ends. So why don't we go up here and see if we can't take these guys out. When the time comes, when the siege flips. Let's see. Uh, so this would be my vassal of Patri wants gold maybe that'll help them out okay so we have sacked Lab Libarna uh, we can loot it normally and he would gain some popularity we could let them roam freely kill some freemen We will let the looting be gentle. I think I like that. Right, military tradition. We could pick up Omen power here. Uh, that would significantly boost the growth rate that we have going right now. Uh, I definitely want to get these enslavement efficiency. So I'm going to head up for Omen power. I'm now in here. We're now getting 0.3 roughly. Take this out if we can. Accept the offer. We have another capital import route because that penalty modifier ran out. Uh, importing olives will give us national slave happiness, which is good because it keeps our slaves productive and less likely to revolt. Revolting slaves is bad. Don't you know? It will hurt our economy. Uh, you're actually going to stay there and occupy that territory for me. Our little uh, vassal fleet, is do our vassal army is doing its job. My heavy, my super heavy um, infantry over here don't really have much to do. I could, in theory, walk around this fortress, and we will do that, actually. I think, I think I've made that decision now. And get this sieging down. We've cut down their hiding spots. There's very few places they can run to now. take a little bit of time to get these last two forts sieged down and then it's just like once these are sieged down it's all good it's just a wait unfortunately we did breach the walls we could assault with these breached walls although there's a lot of garrison there <clears throat> so let's have a look here the tribal people request migration um, redirect us somewhere more appropriate so they would move to Iguvium. So this would make the tribesmen unhappy here. Let's see. Areti. 
Aretium. So the people of Aretium want to move. These are Etruscan tribes, and they want to go to Visal. I have a request mission from the local to cross the border of the land owned by our neighbor. So this would basically get rid of tribesmen in my in my lands and move them out into another country, which I'm actually kind of okay with. Like that's totally fine. Now I just have less tribesmen in my nation, which I, I don't really want tribesmen if I can avoid them. I'm trying to civilize here. Okay, I think we've more or less... Ooh, it's going to be a battle here. I think we should be able to take it. Oh no, that's going to reset the siege. Get onto the boat. We're going to go cut the head off the snake. You go siege that. Boats, get into this province. Let's get our heavy infantry squad over here. We did burn a lot of manpower in this war, but that's what it's like fighting tribes. They just have like infinite manpower. Very hard to fight a tribe. Let's start suing for peace from some of these guys. And we're gonna take all your land. We're gonna take all your money. We'll cut you down. I'm not gonna sue for peace with these guys yet. I don't remember what thing they were using, but I'm going to go to Bottleneck and see if that works. We have them now uh, in a pincerated movement. They have nowhere to run to. So Deception worked here. Skirmishing. Ah, they're beating me here with the skirmishing stance. But my troops are still of a high enough quality that we should be able to fight through this disadvantage. I'm going to send my troops in there, and I'm going to order the assault. I definitely don't need to be taking this attrition. I'm going to make sure we siege that down before peace is enforced. We can get a new invention. We need a new religious guy. Build cost is really nice, because it just makes m my investments into my country more efficient there's a population map mode if you're curious oh Venetia is at war with me that's interesting let you guys get over here and see if you can make a difference well, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna get you guys to go into reorganization mode and then walk over there and by the time you get there you should be uh, fully done reorganizing shouldn't take long I'll be able to turn this off in a second it does make them cost more maintenance and slow them down but they do recover up to their maximum limit faster which is what we want here we want these guys <clears throat> up to where they want to be Okay, accept that. You... Almost there. Let's see, lending a hand. Civic faction will back my diplomatic moves. Yes. Looks like someone died. The auger. We'll get a new auger who will give us some omen power. Okay, you guys are up to 1400. I can cut that down now. How long left on this piece? About halfway through until peace gets enforced. I'm super tempted to jump in here with my troops. And uh, force a assault. Looks like we won this battle over here. That's good. 
Call for peace is happening. I know, I know, I know. I want this thing. We're gonna assault. It's gonna cost me a lot of manpower to do this, but uh, it's mostly vassal manpower. Assume control, and then assault. We did breach the walls, which helps. We are burning a lot of manpower here. Mostly our vassal manpower, though. Well, they managed to prevent the... There we go. So, sue for peace. Give me all your property. Banish. Sue for peace. Give me all your property. Banish. Sue for peace. Give me all your property. And banish. So we have expanded Rome. Excellent. Our name is currently a little bit weird, but we shall fix that over time. Let's have a look at the um, local autonomy. I think the culture and stuff in here is actually relatively okay. Alvan. I think we're mostly okay culturally in here. There's not too much unrest. There's a little bit. But I think we can do uh, civilization effort in here. And that will slowly get rid of all the tribesmen that we don't want. Speaking of uh, tribesmen, it's time to go check on some of our most promising provinces. Still, a decent, it's still enough tribesmen in and around here to be worried about. Now, I could promote them out. Have a look here. Just like a, a city filled with Jewish um, citizens, which is kind of fun. I'm going to have a lot of unrest in here, but they're a relatively low part of the pop. Just a, a funny little circumstance where that the final citizen that like survived in here was a, was a Hebrew citizen. Um, a Hebrew... A, a Hebrew Jewish citizen... It's like culture, religion. Just just so happened to be the last one that survived here. And now this entire city is going to be filled with citizens. I don't know. I kind of like that. It's like a little bit of a role play, right? The, the, it was like a little little Jewish haven in um, in ancient Rome. Although I think they're actually still mostly over here, right? There's Hebrew. Yeah, there's the Hebrew. And then, yeah, there's the Jewish uh, thing. There's probably a few little pockets of Jewishness around the world. Yeah, here. There's probably quite a few distributed around as well. Bit of Hellenic over here as well. Interesting. So Orastrianism, Hindu. Amazingly, there's little pockets of Hellenic here. I imagine that has to do with slaves that have been taken. That would be my greatest guess. When you see little pockets of religion like that, it's from slaves being taken. Um, all right. So we have some starving pops over here in Popley. Why is that? It's because you were looted. Unfortunate. That sucks. Uh, so we've actually got a bit of a rest period ahead of us here. We need to rebuild our legions, our manpower. So we'll be spending a bit of time just chilling. Let's get you to go there. And you to go there. Fort-wise, I think this is too many forts. So I'm going to get rid of this one. And this one. I think that's just too many forts. Um, I do like the idea of having a fort in this mountain pass as well. That's a good spot. Although I would prefer to have been on the this thing. So they have to um, put a boat on it. So I might build a fort here and then delete this fort. And then I might also put a fort here. To just make this pass through the coastline just even more awful to try and go through. It's an important part of like your how you defend yourself is, is fort placement and stuff like that. Uh, like, we're not particularly, like, we're not super interested in trying to unite uh, the Italian peninsula right now. Because there's a bit of a war going on that we we don't want to interfere with that just yet. And the tribes are still a pain in the ass. I will, not, I will happily and readily admit that. We did get an oratory advance, which opened up some new stuff here. Right? This is only fresh. Whatever, I could be wrong. 
But yeah, I'd like to build another legion. Um, and I would like to... It's probably going to be a light legion again, because the supply limit is mainly the thing. And we're going to be fighting a lot of these um, low supply countries. Like, here's these guys. Like, It might be another one of these sort of heavy uh, combat legions. With the um, thingies. I might do like an archer's light infantry, like cavalry legion actually as well. But mainly we have to wait for manpower to recover. So it's going to be kind of like a bit of high speed gaming here, playing at a... Oh wow, we need to get rid of these uh, pirates as well. We have a bunch of cash too in the bank. Where am I taking attrition? No, I guess I'm not taking attrition. Just like the last bits of reinforcement. Army maintenance cost reduction. That's always nice. Um, we could also start playing with some... Um, mercenaries too, if we wanted to. Although these guys would take absolutely horrific attrition. Um, if I were to recruit them. Because they're like so many heavy infantry. Oof. That's a lot of heavy infantry. Got forts coming up there. Uh, wait, who are you at war with? Oof. Big oofs from you, man. You are in some serious warfare right now. Um, Invention-wise, there is a... Army maintenance cost coming up. And a supply limit. We definitely want the supply limit one. That's going to be a big, 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 big problem with us as we go through the game. Um, yeah, sure, free marketplace. Why not? We also need to make a decision what we're going to do with this region over here. Do we want to focus on, like, granaries, try and get the growth up? Or do we maybe want to do uh, marketplaces to increase the civilization level and the income? Or perhaps do we want to build training camps and just turn this into like a manpower place that's efficient at making manpower? There's a couple forts and stuff in here already. I kind of like the idea of uh, making sure that my primary culture areas have really, really strong growth with granaries. And the logic behind that is, is um, disloyalty and civil wars is based on your population percentage. So if I'm able to grow my own sort of native pops more quickly um, and keep them loyal, we won't have as many problems when we're expanding. We currently have 2,000 pops, which is amazing already, considering, like, you've got Phrygia over here, which starts with 3,000. You've got Egypt over here, which starts with 2,000, although they make, like, absurd money. Uh, and then, like, Maria, <laughs> they start with, like... 7,000 pops, which is insane. Although it looks like they've been getting hit by barbs, which is usually these red splotches on the um, thing map mode means that a barb has appeared and done some damage to the civilization value in the local area. Yeah, it looks like barbs have been pouring through here as well. Oof. Whereas you look over here at Rome, we're nice and green. So I think, as part of the strategy to try and maximize my population and the population that is loyal to me, I'm going to make more granaries in these sort of, quote-unquote, Roman-friendly territories. And sure, it takes like 100 years for this to pay off, right? But the idea is, um, essentially, what, what the granary does is it makes my the slave revolts less likely, but it also um, makes... It's so that the six of the population in the city are, are free in terms of growth. Whereas normally you lose minus 0 0.1 or 0 0.01 growth rate per pop with the granary. For every 10 pop, we're only losing like 40% as much. Because you can build a granary every 10 pop and stuff like that. So it kind of offsets the growth of the, the negative growth, which I think is cool. Okay, another invention. I think we were waiting. We'll wait for the... Um... So who is looking like they will win? 
Looks like it will be Vopiscus, who is this guy from the Mercantile Faction. I think I'd like the Civic Faction to win if they could. So we'll give them a boost. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. So the Mercantile Faction did win. Uh, oh, my diplomat oh, diplomatic reputation lets you integrate faster. Oh, that's actually an important thing that I didn't know. So that means this is actually of a higher priority than it was. So we'll grab that. Because that actually significantly speeds up how fast these guys get integrated into my nation. And now that they are getting integrated, it is time to start doing a civilization effort in here. Get rid of all these tribesmen that we don't want. Uh, am I, I'm integrating them all, yes. These guys over here will eventually be integrated, but they're kind of providing me with a little bit of a standing army in this area, so I'm okay with, like, not integrating them yet. It is a very small and weak army, but an army nonetheless. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to call that the end of the episode. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you guys are enjoying this series so far. Please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Remember to leave a like if you want to directly support my channel. And remember to leave a comment if you want to give me your feedback. Other than that, I want to say I love you all very much. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.